like to welcome you to our first community meeting of our new community organization, District 6 Community Planners. Um, we will be having these meetings once a month, uh, the second Wednesday of each month. For the next couple months, we will be having them at uh, 6.30 because there is a meeting before us from 5 to 6.30. Um, so we will be meeting a half hour after, later than our normal time. And um, I would like to go around with, and start with introductions. My name is Marvis Phillips. I'm the interim board chair of District 6 Community Planners. I'm also a 39-year resident of the Tenderloin and a 25-plus year resident of this building. And I live on the 12th floor. And I'm former president of the Alexander Tenants Association Incorporated. Uh, I'm Susan Bryan. I'm a videographer and uh, secretary, secretary and, treasurer. and treasurer of the community planning, District 6 community planning. Uh, I live in the neighborhood. Okay, now who's next? Hello, I'm Reginald Who's? Wait, 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 wait. Okay, we got to get you here. All right, wait, all right. Uh, hello, I'm Reginald Meadows, and I've been living in the community for over 40 years. Been on the numerous boards um, for better district six and uh, attended the Lawrence People's Congress, IRCA, and also was once a member and president, president. and vice president and signed of arms of the Tennessee Association. And with Marvis, Craig with Marvis. And yes, thank you. We're also a member of the dis of District 6 community plan. And I want you. I forgot one. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm Willow Duffy. I'm a member at large of District 6 community planners. Uh, it's really nice to have an evening meeting that works really good for the residents where we get planning information for people, from presenters. As far as I know, this is the only one in the neighborhood. And I'm, I'm glad that it's coming together. Glad that it's Ma'am? Here, I'm Suzanne Gaudier with the San Francisco Public Utilities Commission, and I appreciate the invitation to be here. We're going to talk a little bit about water, water rates, water quality, and uh, any impact of our services on all of you all. And then there'll be a couple of very modest prizes. Hi, I'm Amy Cabeloso Yoa. As Suzanne is my colleague, we are here to make a presentation. Lieutenant. I'm Tom Hardy. I'm here to represent Tenderloin Police Station down the block. Thank you. Uh -huh. Hi, I'm Alexandra Goldman. I am the Community Organizing and Planning Manager at TNDC. Thank you. Hi, I'm Bill. I'm an architect uh, working on the design of the 600 bed S project for your client. Mm -hmm. I'm Tenny Tenny. Oh. I'm a sponsor for 600 and I'm Thank you. looking for an opportunity to share with you about the project tonight. Yeah, you don't have to get up. I. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Uh, oh. Well, I'd like to welcome everyone. Mm -hmm. We have some simple. Yeah. Oh, 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 yeah. O
If not, is there a motion to approve the agenda? I is there so a second? Approve. I so approve. Uh -huh. All in favor say aye. 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 Hi, Dennis. You want to sign in when you have a chance? Um, we have a very limited budget in this organization. Uh, right now, our budget's zero. Uh, so I, I have a donation jar if you want to contribute to our organization. Reggie, can you hand it out? Thanks. Just take it around. Thank you. And uh, it helps and will help in the future for getting things like uh, sodas or water or something so we have a little more uh, fluid than we have now. This is a very ad hoc committee, um, and we're all residents in the neighborhood, um, so we uh, work on a very, very limited budget. So I say thank you. Um, our presentations will start off with the TNDC Planning Committee, Alexandria. You're up. Should I stand up or? Yeah, you can, because we need you on the camera. Yeah, if you stand there, it's good. You know. That's a good place to stand right, right. there. Okay. Okay. Oh. Um, good evening, folks. I know a lot of you already. Um, I'm Alexandra, and I'm the Community Organizing and Planning Manager at TNDC. Um, so I think I was invited here to talk a little bit about what we're doing around planning work or anything in this. Uh, well, basically the planning committee what its functions sure. are. Sure. So um, for the past, I would say about three years, we've been having what we call um, like a land use 101 class. Um, and that's been a place where we talk about planning issues. So it's a little different from, from this in that I think we don't have quite so many guests. But what we do is talk a little bit about the planning process in San Francisco, um, talk about opportunities for engagement, and then talk about other key issues that um, folks in the community are concerned about or interested in. So, you know, we've gone to a lot of planning commission hearings to testify for or against various projects. And right now, um, we have a pretty significant organizing effort going uh, on around the um, Civic Center redesign process. So people might know that the uh, Civic Center UM Plaza area is undergoing a design process through the city. Um, and our folks are getting involved to ensure that the way that this public space is redesigned is beneficial to people in the neighborhood. So we've identified a few key areas that we want to see um, focused on in this, in this um, public space, um, and we've been working with the planning department in various ways around that. So um, TNDC um, and our department also does other, other types of involvement in planning work. Um, I'm one of the co-chairs of the Market Street for the Masses Coalition, which is a coalition of 30 plus neighborhood organizations, um, including some of the ones represented here. So both Tenderloin Votes and the Tenderloin People's Congress are both members of Market Street for the Masses. If District 6 Community Planners is interested in that, um, I can talk about what the membership process is. Um, we've been a group that's been negotiating a lot of community benefits agreements with um, projects moving into the neighborhood. We've signed probably seven or eight community benefits agreements um, with most of the projects that have come through in the past few years. Um, and so through that process, we've won things like um, uh, more deeply affordable housing, more units of affordable housing. We've won certain construction um, mitigation so that people who live near these projects will be minimally disrupted by the process. Um, and we've done a lot of relationship building in, the, in, in that process. So um, if you're interested in coming to the Land Use 101 class, it is, as Marva said, um, immediately before this meeting, um, but it's, it's twice a month. So it's the second and, fourth. second and fourth Wednesdays of the month, um, starting at 5 p.m. right here. Um, my colleague Ramon um, usually teaches that class, um, but he couldn't stay 
for this meeting. Um, I used to teach it, so I, I know. I know a little bit about it. So that's just basically it. If there's anything else I can share, I'm happy to share. Um, or if there are people have any questions, I'm happy to answer them as well. You have $20? We can. Anybody have uh, questions for uh, Alexandria? Yeah. Um, uh, there's been certain uh, HUD proposals in the last few months that have been floating around mm -hmm. and, uh, so, and and the national low-income uh, uh, people that he's associated with uh, have sent around you know some of the different proposals for mm -hmm. them for people who who are on you know uh, who uh, say are, are on income-based housing mm -hmm. and uh, have you had any input about that or so do you mean sort of like the <coughs> federal budget cuts that have yeah. been proposed mm -hmm. um, so we have through um, so what what the department that I run does is community organizing and so we are involved in a variety of ways we have another group that's called um, tenderloin solidarity mm -hmm. and that group is a group that engages on on federal policy issues. So I think that they've been, you know, we, we're staying involved in that. I personally have not been asked to weigh in on federal housing policy, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but through that group, we do provide people with the opportunity to to become informed, to call relevant politicians, um, and just generally to be engaged um, mm -hmm. on on a federal level. So a lot of the work that that I've done and that um, the, the different groups that I work with have done is, is pretty local in mm -hmm. scope, pretty much even just specific to the Tenderloin, mm -hmm. and if not the Tenderloin, then definitely San Francisco. Well, it seems like we're under a kind of multi-pronged attack. Sure. Like through like Medi Medicaid or, or as we could have here, yeah. Medi-Cal, yeah. and uh, the different uh, requirements that they seem to want to push, and it's, it's like, um, aimed at discouraging people rather than, you know, helping them to live. Yeah, I agree with that. Certainly it seems like this administration doesn't have much interest in supporting people in this country <laughs> who need things. Definitely they have an agenda of cutting as much government uh -huh. resources as possible. So I think we, we can see that, we can see that, we'll, we'll see the impact of that in this neighborhood for yes. sure, unfortunately. A really good question. Being that we are American citizens, we're also part of that government. Yeah. They have a say. Yeah. And when they decide to cut and don't cut. Well, cause, yeah. Because as, as we are also that government, we are the same people they're cutting it from. The ones who are the representatives of who they are, mm -hmm. they cut it from us. And that's not right for me just to get away with that. And I'm just, I agree with you, Reggie. And that's one of the ways we can exercise our voices through voting. So it's important to vote, and also by calling our politicians and doing other sorts of things, like holding rallies and things like that. So I know you're on board with those types of activities, and me too. You know, there are probably excesses in the social safety net. For example, the rooms in this building and the one next door and some of the other buildings, mm -hmm. in some cases the tenant only has to come up with $25 a month. Uh -huh. That's Supposedly it's 30% of income, but the person who only has $75 a month in income, they don't have a housing problem. They have an income problem. Uh -huh. you know? But what they're doing in Washington, it's not, it's not at all sensible or anything. They're just chopping the head off of everything. Yep. You know, and they're just taking like meat cleave of everything. So. You got yep. your bone head degrade in the office. I, it's really hard to be collaborative with them. They're not. No. It's not a. He worked for him for six months and he fires you six months later. So, yeah. I mean, he has, he has no, what is it, loyalty? No loyalty. He had no scruples. Scruples? Common sense? Um, backing on what Otto said, uh, I'm on the internet now. I'm online. And there's been a lot of chatter online from upteen number of Democratic clubs mm -hmm. <laughs> I get stuff from on uh, what's going on in Washington. And um, scary what it is, uh, it's all the cuts coming to uh, T-HUD and Social Security and Medicare and Medi-Cal are direct result of the tax cut to the wealthy. Mm -hmm. Because apparently the debt, the national debt, has already risen a trillion dollars 
just because of what's going on. That's one thing. Two, um, if this, I won't dignify it with the proper term, um, person that HUD gets its way, uh, people who live on what's left of their SSI or Social Security will be paying 35 to 40 percent of their income for rent and will have to work. Yeah, so that's, that's what's coming down, one of the ideas coming down. Mm -hmm. nice. The other side for your organization, the planning, the planning committee, uh, there, was a measure, there was a hearing yesterday on a resolution sponsored by Peskin, Rohner, Yee, and Fever of uh, the Board of Supervisors at Land Use to oppose Senator Wiener's mm -hmm. uh, SB 827 Transit Rich Housing mm -hmm. Bonus Program. Mm -hmm. um, this organization has already come out against it. Okay. And um, I think it would be important if we could get as many people as possible to flood the Board of Supervisors, all 11 of them, um, with, uh, uh, with supporting the Planning Commission's decision to oppose mm -hmm. uh, the, the uh, Senate bill and um, get for getting the city on board to oppose that as a, on the city level and uh, then to change direction and flood the state senate um, housing committee or planning committee whatever committee it's mm -hmm. going to be in with uh, uh, opposition mm -hmm. and if necessary work with other partners within the community to get busloads of people to go up and descend mm -hmm. upon sacramento mm -hmm. and um, uh, fight for our rights because uh, when i got a hold of it it's absolutely insane. They want to gut the planning code of all the every county, and uh, I got a, I got an email that two thirds of the county's planning commissions in the state have voted to oppose it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean it's understandable. Planning commissions wouldn't be a big fan of it because, like you said, it pretty much usurps a lot of the power that they have in a variety of areas. So I can understand that. But what's what's kind of frustrating, I think, is that if you look at where it applies just in the Bay Area, I don't know if you've seen this map that's been going around, but it's like it applies to all of San Francisco, but it applies to only tiny pockets of the peninsula, which in my opinion is where they really do need to build housing. And so, I mean, the so, peninsula, uh, Fremont, Milpitas, right. uh, going down to San Jose, going out um, past Livermore, um, Pacific Bay Point, Contra Costa, uh, now where the uh, Sharp train's going in uh, Sonoma County and um, uh, Marin County. So I think that it needs to be either be, as it is, a statewide program mm -hmm. or you should do it locally here, mm -hmm. not. Yeah, I mean, you know, I personally, I don't have any problem with for forcing like rich cities to build more housing. I think it's actually a, probably a pretty good idea. Um, but, you know, concentrating, like some people are arguing that it, it might encourage more development on the western part of San Francisco. And honestly, I'm okay with that too. The western part of the city is mostly zoned for single family homes. And I think it would be great to see some higher density housing and some affordable housing there. And in the best version of this bill, this bill would help that. But there's a lot of other negative externalities, um, AKA like people getting displaced that I think are not addressed enough. Um, I'm with that on that. Uh, one of my biggest complaints is um, it takes the people's right to decide the future of their neighborhood mm -hmm. away from the people mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. puts it in the hands of politicians mm -hmm. um, who are mostly, I won't say completely, because I know some who aren't, but are somewhat mostly in the hands of big money spenders. It does take that power away from local yeah. communities, absolutely. Nothing against project developers. We have one sitting here. No, <laughs> well, uh, nothing against you. Okay, is there anything else out you there? You know I'm a softy. I mean, I'm not a very good progressive sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> but think about it. If, if they take a low, bit of low income housing power in Atherton, all these multi-million dollar value properties, their property value is going to yeah. crash. It's going to crash. That's not necessarily good for everyone. Well, I have a question about that. That's a big cost. I don't well, know. What, what I is don't... more important? 
to you all citizens 